Professor Joseph Abugu joins us now. He's a lecturer in the Faculty of Law, University of Lagos. Thank you for coming on this morning, Prof. Morning, Mr. Well, interesting morning, development. I mean, uh, the senator uh, spoke <laughs> copiously about it, giving us history, background to what he thinks is going on, the motive. He was very keen on letting us understand the motive. But what do you make of all of this as it's playing out? Well, the first thing that strikes me is the fact that uh, the Senator and indeed uh, members of the National Assembly, particularly the Senate, uh, the position they have taken on this matter seems to be that, uh, you know, like the Senator said, until you are convicted, mm -hmm. you are presumed to be innocent. And because of that, it is acceptable to them that the number three citizen of this country is in the dock before the CCT, facing charges of a criminal nature, facing charges that fundamentally rocks on his integrity as a member of the hallowed chambers of the National Assembly. And it's acceptable to them simply because he has not been convicted. No, but the, he, the, what he was saying is they're predicating that vote of confidence on the motive why they are bringing this up i'm not sure he's actually saying that i mean if he's found guilty i don't think that that vote of confidence would change the verdict well mm -hmm. when you talk of motive motive by who this is the number three citizen and he is a leader in the ruling political party indirectly what they are saying is their own party is turning around against the number one citizen in the National Assembly. Is that unlikely, considering that uh, the party was not exactly happy on, on how he emerged number mm -hmm. three citizen of the country? Well, it is not unlikely. But if it is, what lies, where lies your moral <coughs> status to be the leader of the party in the National Assembly. You see, at the end of the day, it's an issue of morality. One, you are a member of the APC. You got to the National Assembly on the platform of the APC. You want to ascribe to the leadership of the, of the Senate, again, on the platform of the APC. Does it not smack of some moral deficiency? Is the law about morality? Well, law has a moral content. Because when you're talking of motive now, because you've just said, look, it's not a question of, oh, you know, uh, until he's convicted, you know, he's innocent. But they're looking at the motive. That's the senator said. That's the senator. And when you talk of the motive, you're not talking of morality. Is it justifiable morally that this is happening? But if you look at the history that the senator is referring to, if you got to the assembly on the platform of the party, and then immediately you got there, you turn court and say that you will not abide by the wish of the party, and you're going to be the leader of the ruling party in that house, hey, there's some moral content. Why is it that we call the National Assembly the chambers, hallowed chambers? It's not only when you are convicted that, you know, you, you, you can then say, you know, you are guilty. But Prof, the fact that it was a member from PDP that spoke uh, for the Senate president, doesn't that, I did not try to send a message to the people saying, look, this is not about the party anymore. This is about the Senate, the institution of the Senate. But that is where the moral content lies. When the leader of your party hobnobs with the opposition <laughs> and then justifies his acceptability or otherwise as a leader of the party in the National Assembly on the basis of the support of the opposition party. There is a moral issue. Yeah, but as a Senate yeah. president, yes. is he Senate president? Uh, is Senate president? First and, foremost, first and foremost, he came on the platform of a party. Okay? That party is the ruling party that has formed the government at the center. Okay, and as Senate President, he's the number three citizen in this country. 
and so is the flag bearer of the party. So it is morally wrong at that point in time for him to turn coat and says, look, if the party is not supporting him, the opposition will support him to yeah. maintain his position. So but but if, sorry, sorry to, to interrupt you, but if you look at the figures right now, yes. he also has a very sizable chunk yeah. of even his own party as well. I agree with you. He does. So how can we say he's tongue coat? No, because essentially we all saw how it played out. How the party wanted certain individuals, wanted the position of the Senate zoned to a particular section, and how that wasn't possible because he, as a contender for the office of the Senate, was able to muster the support of opposition senators to be able to carry majority vote what against the wish of the party. What was wrong with that? What is wrong with that? is the moral content of politics. Because I'm looking at a situation where the senators, okay. the senators in the opposition were still going to vote anyway, mm -hmm. and somebody had to court their, you know, court their favors, as it were. And if he saw ahead of it and courted their favor, and also we, we will not be able to tell if majority, because if we're looking at 83 senators backing him currently, we do not know if this figure would have been the figure that would have voted for him, exactly. perhaps more. And we all know how it played out that the elections were held on a particular day at a particular time. But what we do know, of what the we do know, of the Senate were somewhere else. For no fault of his, that's one. And then, but we do know that all the people who were there in the Senate on that day voted unanimously for but, him. Yeah, but that is the issue of leadership of the party. If you are the number three citizen and you are the leader of the party, okay, in the National Assembly, is it morally right that the party has invited some members of your house to a particular function, okay, and are not in the chambers, and then you go ahead to carry out a major assignment like the election of principal officers when the full membership of your house are you, not assembled you, you, you for a reason known to you? You know what I don't get here? Help us here. We're talking about the independence of the three arms of government. Yes. And if truly the legislature is an independent arm, how does the influence of the party come in? The party is overwhelming. Its influence spans not only the executive branch of government, but also the legislative branch of government. In fact, if there is any arm that is a little bit insulated from the party, it's the judiciary. Okay? So, independence is only a question of checks and balances. I mean, the, the members of the legislature came from the party. The members of the executive came from the party. And for a harmonious working relationship, there must be some ethos. And in all of this, the underlying web is the program of the party. Yeah, but Prof, I mean, isn't the party, can't it be described as overreaching for them to want to uh, have, some say it was supposed to be, it was supposed to turn out as an imposition. It's a democracy. If the party says, this is our candidate, any other person do any other thing, that's your kettle of fish. We've seen presidential candidates too, before they go for primaries. The party says, this is our candidate. But other people still contest. They do, but look at it from this perspective. The party has a program. A president is elected on the platform of the party, and then he assumes office, okay, and then simply goes way around 300 degrees from implementing the programs of his party to implementing the program of his opposition party. What do you think would be the likely consequences? His party will denounce him. Notwithstanding the fact that as president, he has the right, legally, to be able to say, this is the way I want to govern this country with his executive. Yeah, but this you know, is the same thing before, is happening sorry, with sorry, the but National but Assembly. But